In this podcast, uh, we will go through the basics of how to grade breast cancer. This is a companion podcast to the, to the podcast on the background of grading. In that podcast, um, uh, the evidence base for breast cancer grading and its historical importance um, ha have been described uh, for you. Um, in this podcast, we will go through the actual process uh, or basics of carrying out uh, grading. You'll recall that uh, breast cancer grade um, is, a, is a methodology for seeing how a breast cancer uh, resembles the normal structure. The more a cancer resembles its normal uh, tissue component or where it's arisen from, uh, the better behaved that cancer is in, in general. A well differentiated tumour uh, in, in the breast will resemble the normal mammary lobular structure. A poorly differentiated or grade 3 breast cancer um, doesn't re really resemble the normal structures uh, in, in any uh, identifiable way. It's focusing on growing and not on doing normal things, whereas a well differentiated cancer focuses on doing normal things like secretion um, and doesn't grow particularly quickly. The way we assess histological grade is to look at three components. Tubule formation, that is how well uh, the tumour is forming glands and glandular structures or tubular structures. Nuclear pleomorphism, that is how large or how varied in size the nuclei of the tumour are. And mitotic frequency, which is looking at the, the number of uh, mitotic figures one can identify in an area of the tumour. Tubule formation really looks at how well the tumour is producing glandular structures and by producing glandular structures it's doing normal things. Uh, the glands in the breast will produce the secretion um, uh, uh, secretions like milk and high molecular weight glycoproteins. Nuclear pleomorphism looks at the size of the nuclei which is dependent on how much DNA is there and whether there are aberrations of DNA which are common in some types of cancer. So it's a reflection of abnormalities of nuclear DNA. Mitotic frequency is looking at how fast uh, the tumour is growing uh, by inference uh, of the number of mitotic figures. So uh, when a cancer is cell is dividing, it will, it will go through the process of mitosis. Uh, and parts of that process are visible by seeing the chromosomes and how they're arranged in that dividing uh, cell nucleus. So these three components provide a way of assessing different aspects of the morphology and inherently the biology of the cancer. Let's look at each component. First of all, tubule formation. If a tumour is uh, producing a lot of glands and tubules, uh, that is, it looks close to normal, uh, and it's, that's present in over 75% of the tumour, it's allocated a score of 1. If a tumour has little or no tubule formation, uh, and that is less than 10% of the tumour is forming glands or tubules, uh, that's given a score of 3. Let's look at some examples. Here we see a breast cancer uh, in the field to the right uh, of this uh, picture, uh, and you can see all the, the islands of cells, those the, the dark pink and purple uh, cells, are producing glandular structures. Those are the circles with uh, some secretions in the centre of, of those glandular spaces. All of the tumour islands in this particular cancer are forming uh, glands or tubules, and so this would be allocated a score of 1. In this cancer, uh, there clearly is gland formation, that's those rounded spaces with uh, clear centres or some secretions within them, but there are islands of tumour uh, cells which are not forming uh, glands or, or tubulate-like structures. So in this particular case, it's perhaps a little over 50% of the tumour is forming glandular structures, and so this would be allocated a score of 2. The assessment of uh, tubules and gland formation uh, is, uh, needs to be um, uh, rigorous, and it should only apply to those structures where there are clearly defined central lumens surrounded by polarised tumour cells. And as we've already said, a tumour in which has over 75% of its area composed of such structures would score a score of 1 for tubule formation. In this particular cancer, you can see some normal trapped uh, breast epithelium here, these structures which are darker purple, and the tumour cells are infiltrating in the stroma around uh, these normal cells. 
and this allows you to compare the size of the tumor cell nuclei with the normal cell nuclei. Um, and these are relatively similar. There's not much difference between those. So this case, particular case, would be allocated a score of 1 for nuclear pleomorphism. In this example, we have some normal epithelial cells here uh, and tumor cells infiltrating the stroma. And you can see these tumor cells are somewhat larger uh, than the adjacent normal cells, and they vary in size and shape. So this case would be allocated a score of 2 for nuclear pleomorphism. In this particular case, the cells are very large and they vary in si size and shape. And so this particular case would be allocated a score of 3. Here's another example where we have some epithelial cells present uh, showing these very large, bizarre tumor cell nuclei. Again, this would be allocated a score of 3. A breast pathologist uh, in, in Glasgow, James Going, had a, st had a study many years ago looking at whether there were differences between pathologists in the allocation of nuclear grade scores in breast cancer grading. They carried out a relatively small study of 17 pathologists. And they sent them a, a large series of images of normal epithelial cells and tumor cells from the same cases. And each pathologist was asked to uh, allocate a nuclear score uh, to uh, the particular uh, uh, tumor case. And there's a distribution here. And this looks like a potentially random distribution. Some pathologists are uh, typically scoring higher nuclear grade uh, versus other pathologists scoring n lower nuclear grade for the same case. But the interesting thing about their study is that they were able to show that the pathologists allocating lower scores uh, were trainees in pathology. Those allocating the middle range of scores were general pathologists. And those allocating high scores for nuclear pleomorphism were specialist breast pathologists, uh, demonstrating that specialist breast pathologists tend to score nuclei more aggressively uh, at higher levels uh, than trainees or general pathologists. And my advice to trainees when they're learning breast pathology is if you're debating whether a case has a nuclear score of 2 or 3, uh, a breast specialist is likely to score it as a score 3. And interestingly, uh, myself and, and my colleagues in Nottingham were all in the top three highest scores of nuclei. Um, but we uh, uh, have essentially developed the grading system and we know it works and is reproducible with our me methodology. So to note, nuclear grading, individual pathologists do mark differ markedly in their approach to nuclear grading and breast specialists appear to allocate higher scores than non-specialists. I'd also remind you that very few breast cancers possess very bland nuclei, warranting a score of 1. Uh, most cases uh, uh, have a score of 2 or 3. Mitotic frequency, we can see mitotic figures here, these darkly stained structures, uh, in various stages of mitotic um, uh, division, cell division. If you have well-fixed uh, material, uh, mitoses are easy to see and easy to score and count. Mitotic frequency is dependent on how many mitoses you can see per 10 microscope high-power fields. But microscope high-power fields areas differ between different man manufacturers' microscopes. For this reason, the WHO now recommends uh, assessing an, a tumor area of 2 square millimeters uh, with these cut points for mitotic frequency scores. And so if one calibrates one's microscope field area uh, using tools such as this produced by the Royal College of Pathologists and replicated in the WHO uh, books and the ICCR books, uh, you can then uh, calibrate your microscope and put a label on your microscope to denote uh, the cut points for mitotic scores when you're using that particular microscope. This is important to get reproducibility of mitotic frequency scoring. Accurate mitoses uh, require high quality fixation. If, you're, if your breast um, uh, tissue is poorly fixed, mitoses uh, degrade and disintegrate and they're not it's not possible to see them. So we recommend that all uh, breast cancers are received by the laboratory as quickly after resection as possible, uh, incised promptly and fixed immediately in neutral buffered formalin. And this can be achieved without compromising assessment of uh, surgical resection margins. This particular uh, case, uh, um, as an illustration of how you can how you can get into difficulty, this particular specimen pot was received on a Monday morning in a laboratory, and the surgery was carried out on a Friday afternoon. It had spent some time on a bench uh, over the weekend. It had also been placed in an adequate amount of formalin. This is a mastectomy specimen with very little formalin there. 
and so there wouldn't have been uh, it wouldn't be possible for uh, the formaldehyde to penetrate into that tissue and this renders the tissue um, uh, morphology uh, impossible to assess. Uh, there is significant degradation and autolysis of the tumor cells. Mitoses are not visible and other proteins may not be detectable in this type of tissue. So one of the most important aspects of breast cancer grading is to ensure uh, that you have uh, optimal fixation of your tissues. Even a short delay in uh, tissue fixation, this is looking at the delays of 60 minutes, uh, can lead to degradation of assessment of mitotic figures. And it's particularly those cases that have high levels of mitoses uh, where you see a significant fall in visibility of mitoses, even with short-term delay in fixation. Once each grade component has been scored, um, 1 to 3, uh, those scores are summated to give the final grade. A summated score of between 3 and 5 points denotes grade 1, 6 and 7 points grade 2, and 8 and 9 points denotes grade 3. So the key points in grading um, uh, are do not expect equal numbers of cancers to fall into each grade category. There are three final grades, grades 1, 2 and 3, and they have an, an approximate distribution of 20% grade 1, 30% grade 2, and 50% grade 3 in symptomatic breast cancer. If you audit your grade distribution in your own center and you see fewer, substantially fewer grade 3 cancers and with a majority of grade 2 cancers, that probably means that you're either not applying the grading protocols accurately or you have suboptimal fixation because that will lead to a decrease in your ability to detect mitoses and will lead to a downshifting of your cases from grade 3 to grade 2. If, you, if your patients are detected uh, through mammographic screening, then there is a, a bias in those cases to detect a smaller proportion of grade 3 tumours, which uh, more frequently present as interval cancers between screening rounds. The Achilles heel of grading, as I've mentioned already, is suboptimal fixation. It's absolutely critical to ensure that tissue is well fixed. That makes breast pathology much easier to carry out and uh, much more accurate in assessment of not just grading but uh, all other aspects of breast pathology, vascular invasion assessment, estrogen receptor, HER2 status, etc. So by summating the three scores uh, for grade you can get an overall score uh, of grade 1, grade 2 or grade 3 and this has very very powerful, provides very very powerful information on outcome. If we look at patients at 10 years here and look at grade 3 cases about 45% uh, of patients are alive at 10 years, whereas we contrast to grade 1 patients, nearly 90% are alive at, uh, at, uh, uh, at 10 years. So hugely powerful information if you follow the methodology that I've outlined for you just now. Uh, if you want an evidence base uh, for this, then there are a number of publications from our group and other groups. I would recommend looking at this particular publication from in uh, the Journal of Clinical Oncology in 2008, uh, which updates our, our, uh, our data on breast cancer grading. I'll stop there and thank you for your attention. Once each of the components of uh, grade, uh, ah, start again, cancel, delete. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to edit that one.